Brian's Mobile One. That's cool. Hi, I'm Brian. I've been working on cars for most of my life, at least the last 30 years. I've been doing it for hire for the last 26. It's been a major part of my income. In this video, we're going to talk about some things uh, based on my experience that people miss when they do a power steering diagnosis or repair. On almost every repair that you do on power steering, there'll be some kind of a warning or some kind of label like this. Importante, el sistema hidraulico de brera, oh wait, English. Power steering system should be flushed before installing and replacing unit. Why is that? I found that most of the repairs that we do have to do with something rubber or plastic, as it's getting more common. Something rubber failing, whether it's your wiper blades, those fail and you get all streaky. Radiator hoses, when you squeeze them, they start to, you know, make a cracky sound. Got a little cracky sound out of that one. Uh, but anyway, we're talking about power steering in this case. This is a power steering pump. It is leaking. And usually if a pump leaks, it'll get low, chew itself up or whatever. And you can get debris in the system. But back to rubber, uh, the rubber stuff in this tends to get hard with time. Uh, this is a 2003, so it's 17 years old. Uh, but when that rubber gets to cracking and falling apart, some of that happens from the inside. A lot of it, in fact, happens from the inside. The old fluid gets a little acidic or whatever. The pH gets off on it when it gets old. And long story short, some of that debris ends up in the reservoir. I know the 2003 to 2005 caravans or uh, town and countries, whatever you want to call them, they had a reservoir that was a lot like this, but it was mounted in the middle of the engine compartment, and they would start to whine and I don't want this sucks. Why don't you take care of me? They make a noise that's kind of like that. And the fix for it was to suck all the fluid out and put in a new reservoir. And what was happening is the flow, that's what pumps are for, is to create flow, right? The flow would be diminished, and so uh, the filter in these would block it, and it wouldn't get enough, and then the pump would be starved. Whenever you have a vacuum, you know, like if you, uh, in fact, I'll just demonstrate it for you real quick. So I have here in my hand a bunch of water. It'll work for this. So if I go this way, you're gonna say, well, the air bubbles are going around the seal and that's where they're coming from. But see how they appear everywhere all at the same time? So when you pull a vacuum on something, if there's any air whatsoever trapped in it, boom, it just appears like right on the sides. So if I go this way, it'll do the same thing. I've got my finger just tight as tight. See how it just, you get air out of nowhere. And if I pull it just so, you can see some of them will slip around the sides. See like right there? So that is getting around the seal. And it still applies to what I'm saying about the power steering system because if there's a, a clamp or something that's not good on the hose, as in this case there was a couple like that. When hoses get kind of old, look at how much play there is. It can suck in air from you know, especially with a blocked off reservoir, it can suck in air from around the hose on the suction side. So as you saw, when you have a vacuum and it's applied, you get boiling, bubbling of the fluid. It uh, doesn't matter what liquid it is. The nice thing about liquid is that you cannot compress a liquid. <laughs> However, when you apply a vacuum, you can get a lot of air in it, and then that air results in the pump whining and not being able to get good pressure because then the bubbles in it can be compressed so that's the problem in this particular case what's happening with this bright orange xterra i'm not kidding it's like half my face matches this car <laughs> just about i love it when you go to drive it you'll go to pull out of a parking lot and it's just like no power steering it's like really hard and you got to fight it and then when the rpms increase and that helps push things through the flow gets better then it turns easily but it's like uh, kind of action it's not howling though which is kind of weird but with this case we have a pump that's leaking probably has some damage so we're going to replace the pump and take care of the leak and the damage in one fell swoop but what a lot of people mess up is they don't go through and clean out the system because you can flush all the lines all you want but if you don't look in here and be like oh we need to back flush this and how do you back flush it take it off take it out and you can either spray stuff in here that's safe for plastics or you can back flush it from the other side and flush everything out that way. So now that I'm in the job, there's another little thing that I was going to add. When hoses get kind of old, look at how much play there is. This one, obviously, I've pulled the clamp up. I've got to do that to get this out and flip it over. 
but as I'm doing this that clamp down there because it's not spring loaded and that's why everybody does those well, do's that's why everybody does those spring loaded claps Cla yay <laughs> those spring loaded clamps are nice because they keep giving more and more uh, tightening force with time whereas something that's fixed like this it doesn't let's get you zoomed in there I think you can see this but let's make sure you can see that one needs to be tightened down uh, the hose really should be replaced this one's a shaped hose so that's gonna be a little more tricky but yeah rubber over time it just gets old bummer in reality instead of replacing just the pump you should do all the hose and the rack and pin just do everything but oh my sticker shock this guy's trying to rip me off well really all this stuff's old you could justify replacing it you can see a bunch of the black plastic sitting in there right now so anyway 131,000 17 years old you could justify replacing the whole thing if you wanted but you could probably get away with doing the pump and some fresh fluid you know and a lot of people just do that Let's see what this looks like once it's been cleaned. I don't even need to use a flashlight, you can see. It's all that gray in the middle of the circle, little Mercedes sign, Merc sign. It is not gray, it's screen. You see the little vent holes down there. I wasn't able to get all the way around the perimeter perfectly clean, but you should be able to get good flow through that. I did have to pull this off in order to do it. Um, I put a new hose for the return and for the pressure return. So those are all good to go. The old hoses, you can see here, they are just hard as a rock. You can see you can't really get a good clamping on them. This one wasn't as bad, it's just, anyway, I'm in there, it's already off, put a new one on. So it's justified by age and by wear and everything, so get her done. So we've got the new pump, you can see that it's got Instead of being shiny because it's covered in crap, it's covered in crappy spray paint. It's remanufactured. Uh, it's a little bit of a trick getting this one in there uh, because of the, the dowel. Just like alternators have a dowel that's a press fit with a slit. Um, it's just like a little, it's just like my fingers like that. They're just precision fits. So you have to tap that. How can one uh, tap that? And that, my friends, is what a tap is. On the back side where the big fat bolt, there's a 14, a 12, and a 12 for you Xterra fans that are tuning in. And uh, basically, there's a nut that can fall out, but it's got a little retaining thing, a little 90 degree, so that you don't have to hold a wrench in there. But 14 in the middle, 12 and 12. And then you've got like four or six on this. I still got to tighten my belt. I haven't done that yet. Anyway, repair's turning out good. I need to fill it up bleed it. Um, I like to let it sit for a little bit after the first initial filling. Uh, not feeling like a dentist, but just like filling the fluid. Not feeling like a therapist or emotion. How do you feel? <laughs> Repair's looking good. I'm pretty pleased with it. If I had one of these available, I would do it because it takes some time to clean that. What'd you clean it with? Uh, WD-40. The foaming action, the pressure in that long straw. I hold that sideways and just and just float it all to the bottom, swirl it, dump it, and repeat. This is just going to be a short, quick video. I don't want to go into crazy tons of detail for this, other than to say, SUPERCHARGER! <laughs> you don't see that on a lot of exteriors, so I'm excited. I have the best looking thumbnails on the internet, don't I? That one you think's bad until you see this one. It's got like holes in it. Fortunately, I don't have to be a hand model to be famous on the internet. And that's thanks to you guys. Thanks for not judging me and for subscribing to my channel. If you found this video helpful, of course, consider subscribing. <laughs> Give it a thumbs up. Anyway, I love you guys. Thanks for your support. And uh, cheers. See you on the next one. Bonus footage at the end. Raptor. It's a ram. Power wagon. Yeah.
that's cool.